Uh, hello everyone again. Uh, my name is Mikhail Karabash. I will present my young, my, myself again. Sorry if I repeat myself. I also had yesterday a presentation where some of the people here were in there. Um, I will present you today the Beehive AT emulation. It's a work done uh, with my student, Yon Salesandu Dago. He is a master student at the University of Utah, Bucharest. Uh, he has been working on this ATA emulation for Beehive the whole last year, before the summer. And in the summer, he also did the NE2000 emulation for Beehive. Uh, the NE2000 will get into the main line, but uh, it requires Peter Graham's little work, a little bit more work. Uh, the ATA emulation is in review, but there, uh, there are a few dis uh, disputes on the, on the review track, and I'll talk to you about them uh, a little bit later. Uh, my name is Mihai Karabaj, I'm a PhD student and teaching assistant at the University of Technica of Bucharest. I'm also coding on Beehive, especially in the summer when I have a lot of more free time, and during the semester I'm coordinating uh, students like Alex to work on uh, hypervisor futures. Uh, you all know Peter Graham, he's the principal contributor for Beehive. Uh, he has been my mentor and also he has helped uh, Alex to to finish its ATA emulation work. Uh, this being said, let's proceed to the to the Beehive emulation, ATA emulation. First of all, I want to present to Beehive for the ones who do, doesn't know uh, what it is. It, it is a FreeBSD hypervisor. Basically, it's providing performance virtualization using hardware support. So we have hardware support, and basically we can run programs like we run them on uh, direct programs in the virtual machines like they are running directly on the hardware. Uh, for this we need the hardware support for CPU privilege levels. Basically we add a new privilege level called the hypervisor mode and the memory virtualization, the EPT from Intel for example, extended base tables. Other than that we need hardware per peripherals to be to be emulated especially. Basically the operating system to see uh, its peripherals and work with them, especially the I/O devices. Okay, you can pass through the devices, for example, you can pass through a USB, USB uh, drive, but you cannot multiplex them, you have to emulate at some point some of these. Uh, mainly are the I/O peripherals, because without I/O, you, don't, you can't, cannot have fully functional operating system, the, like AUD, CD-ROM, and network. Uh, storage device is the main one is the one is one of the prerequisites to run a guest. Basically you use a file system to run a guest and uh, to be able to use it. In x86 there are two principal interfaces to talk to the hard disk drives is the HCI and the ATA interface. Uh, right now the uh, Beehive has a mature and uh, quality stable HCI interface and we propose an implementation for the ATA emulation. I want to talk about the motivation of introducing the ATA. There has been a debate between Peter, Marv, and Alex on the uh, on the um, review on the review track of ATA emulation going to the mainline. Uh, that being said, that if Beehive has a HCI uh, interface, why does it need an ATA interface which basically duplicates the functionality and the code and introduces new bugs? Uh, it's because the support for legacy operating systems. There are a lot of operating systems, all operating systems, like FreeBSD 4, 5, uh, recent Windows XP, uh, CentOS 4 and 5, that, that does not have by default HCI support. For example, for CentOS, you can recompile the kernel. But for a lot of companies, this is not acceptable. The point for each company is to virtualize everything they have in their own farm. And they, uh, and they often have um, servers running all, all the all versions of the operating systems, legacy operating systems, because they don't want to touch anything that is running okay, not to code on time. Uh, compatibility between the operating system and other applications they are using, and they cannot afford changing them. And the last one, and it was uh, an often uh, I, I met often that the last case, 
The license is bought a long time ago and connect, connected to the operating system. Okay, they uh, they need to pay more money to upgrade the operating system and they don't want to do this. This is why they want to use the older operating systems and they need support, for example, for AT emulation. If we want the Beehive to have a wide adoption, we need to provide uh, support for any guest OS, being an old or a new one. This is a prerequisite that Peter taught me before uh, starting coding here. This is why the NT2000 emulation network card will be introduced in Beehive. This is the same, the same reason. So this is my motivation and this is why ATA needs to go to the main line of Beehive. Okay. Question. Yeah. Will it be an 11? I don't know. Uh, so the code is in there, but Peter and Mark need to agree about the uh, the merging steps. They will merge the code like it is. Mark wants to uh, to integrate it with the AHHCI um, code base to not replicate the code. There, there is somehow a, a little bit of code replicated in there. Uh, it depends. Peter research it's okay, Mark is not, it's not. And uh, the review and the comments are left in there. I don't know. It, it uh, de depends a lot of, of political, let's say, uh, reasons. <clears throat> okay, so right now I will, uh, I will enter the technical stuff a little and uh, describe the steps we made in order to implement the ATA emulation. Uh, we implemented the following feature. We, we have an LPC bus attachment. LPC, uh, an LPC bus attachment, which is recognized by any other operating system. It has two ATA channels, uh, of course, primary and secondary channels. Also, uh, we implemented the PCI adapter attachment. So we can attach an ATA hard disk drive using two adapters, the LPC and the PCI. The LPC is more uh, is more of use because it's recognized by any other operating system. But uh, in the first place, we implemented the PCI adapter because it was easy to interface it with Beehive and see how things work. So the step was be a PCI adapter and then a PC bus attachment. Right now, both are in place and working. Uh, also, the PC adapter has the DMA channel implemented. I'll uh, describe you this later. Of course, uh, and, uh, like uh, any ATA attachment, uh, it supports two drives, a master and a slave drive, and also supports a CD-ROM. So we basically extended the ATA. Uh, there is an, another standard that extends the ATA called ATA Packet Interface uh, that receives more commands to be able to emulate um, other devices than the disk drive. That's being, that, that's being said, the seed wrong. We, we want to put uh, the operating system using, for example, an ISO, ISO image. Uh, ATA emulation uses the current block device emulation in Beehive. Each disk drive has associated a block context structure. Uh, at each request, we send a block request to the uh, block device emulation layer. Basically, we use the block device emulation layer that was in place in Beehive to send requests. Um, the block device emulation has another thread that runs in parallel with the VM loop in order to uh, receive these requests and process them. Uh, we need to do this, we don't want to block the principle of the uh, virtual machine loop in uh, waiting for IO requests. Um, okay, like I've said be uh, before, one can attach an ATA uh, device using the LPC or PCI uh, bus atta atta attachment. For LPC, you use a minus L, ATA HD, uh, with comma X, where X represents the channel we uh, the channel we want to attach to uh, this hard disk drive, and we can specify a master and a slave, or only a master. It uh, it receives both options. For PC attachment, we use minus s. Uh, also, the um, this is the bus we're attaching to for the zero. Here we configure both channels, each channel having a disk. 
So here is one channel with do this, and here is uh, two channels, each one with this. Both uh, these are you can make various combination for adding a disk uh, to the LPC or PCI dashboard. For a PC drone one is to use only an ISO file, so other format files aren't supported for now. Okay, this is how we configure Beehive in order to attach a disk uh, uh, using an ATA adapter. Uh, I'll enter a little bit in the logical block addressing because it's important and gives us the maximum size of a disk. Uh, basically, the logical block, block addressing uh, defines how we access a sector on the, the disk device. Uh, in ATA uses a 28 bits to address one sector, where a sector has uh, 2000, uh, sorry, 512 bits, which would be the maximum size of a disk. Think on this. So we have 28 bits to address one sector, and the sector has 500. Uh, the answer is 128 gigabytes is 228. This is the number of sectors we can address, multiplied by the size of a sector. Okay, this is the maximum size of a disk, given this LBA addressing. Uh, okay, AT is standard using the LBA group registers and the first four bits in the device register. I won't give any details. Here are the, the 28 bits that are used. They are grouped in different. They are used from different groups of bits. ATA has two transfer modes: PIO and DMA. PIO is basically a polling mode, always polling and waiting for data in the data register. Uh, the PIO was implemented for LPC and PCI, and the DMA is direct memory access. Basically, you send a command for, to transfer the data to the DMA, and the DMA does everything for you. Uh, this is implemented only in PCI. Okay, and now I will, I will uh, introduce you some commands we implemented in order to make ATA work. Basically, the first command is identify device. Uh, to this command, we send information about the device, the size, the name, and so on. Uh, then we have the command read multiple and write multiple. This is used only by PIO to read and write data to the disk. Uh, read and write DMA uh, indicates the first phase of the DMA transfer. A DMA transfer has multiple phases and uh, this indicates the first one. And the last command is a maintenance command, flash cache, um, in order to flash buffers remain to the information there. Then, as I said earlier, we extended uh, the ATA uh, protocol with the ATA packet interface required by the CDROM, adding the following commands, inquiry, capacity, and so on. Um, I won't enter in details with, with each, of the, each of these. How did we do the testing? Sorry. We first attached to this uh, using, for example, a PCI adapter uh, on bus 330 here. For channel 0, we added <coughs> uh, two disks, ATA disks, one master and one slave. And then we looked over the output of the guest. We see here that there is an ATA PCI bus. Uh, we have two channels, and this is the disk, ADA0, and this is the name of the disk. This is this was sent by us, Beehive ATA IDE disk. Okay, the serial number was also sent by us to that information command. Okay, for ADA1 is the same. Look here. Okay. Uh, so this is how we tested the first command, uh, the identify device command. Further, we created some automated tests for reading and writing data that cover the whole list uh, until we no bug has been found in our emulation code. For example, we use a DB to read uh, read from the disk um, from some arbitrary arbitrary sorry um, arbitrary offsets, and then we compare the file with the 
we then you shall uh, you shall do that. Further, we went to install FreeBSD Guest using an HA emulation. Basically, we attached an empty disk and, and then an uh, CDROM image which has the FreeBSD on it and installed the FreeBSD on the ATA emulation device. This also discovered, revealed some bugs that were to solve. So right now you can only use a full ATA emulation to install FreeBSD. Uh, performance. We make some performance tests using this info and we observe about 100 megabytes per second uh, using the ATA emulation. Uh, also, the existing H, uh, A, uh, HCI emulation uh, works at about 300 megabytes per second. Uh, the difference here is because of the LBA addressing. As you remember earlier, I said that the LBA addressing for ATA is only 28 bits. For AHCI, it's 48. This is in one transaction, we can make a lot more uh, transfers, transfers than, uh, than, uh, a, than ATA, so emulation. Okay, so these are the limits of the, of the protocol itself. Uh, right now we have a problem with the ATA packet to CD-ROM uh, works only in PIO mode under the PCI attachment. Uh, the driver sends us in the emulation layer probes from DNA, we acknowledge this, but then the driver starts sending the PIO comments uh, and we don't know if this is the normal behavior of the driver or is a bug in there in our emulation code. Uh, we didn't investigate this too much until now. But it works only. It works only in PIO mode. Uh, the current status: there is a page review, like I said to you before. Uh, here, uh, there is a dispute between Peter and Marv and Alex. I have this written solved, and this driver will, will get into the main, into the head soon. Um, we are waiting to decide the logic should be shared between the ATA and the DAPI and the HCI. As I said, that. that these two are two different implementations. Okay. Uh, so this is the current status. To conclude, we created an ATK emulation in Beehive. Important is, is very important if, if we want to, uh, Beehive to be widely adopted. For example, to be a hyper budget and open stack. Okay. Every cloud provider wants uh, to be able to run any version of operating system, not some particular new ones. We implemented uh, as an LPC or PCI attachment and it's a fully functional emulation for HD and CD-ROM. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have uh, any question, I'll be pleased to answer to you. Please. Could you please enlighten us about the differences between LPC bus and a PCI bus? These are, is there a hardware equivalent? Or is it yeah, a these are two different buses. I could search the Wikipedia for image. Basically, there are two different buses attached to the salvage. Uh, the LPC is the low pin count. Uh, this is the short for LPC. Uh, and um, the old operating system has support for this instead of PCI, for example. What are examples on actual hardware that we use it? I don't have anything right now, an example in mind. Uh, let me search about LPC. Serial interfaces? Uh, it is especially used by ATA, I guess. Uh, LPC bus. I found an image here. Yeah, wait. So this is how it's connected. Okay. Uh, here is the LPC. We have the flash on BIOS. Uh, and the uh, serial port, so all kind of ports are can be connected here. Could you zoom in there? To, sorry? Can you zoom in with the... Uh, I will try, but no. It says something. Okay, and then... Serial parallel floppy. So basically are all of them, but it's a different uh, bus than the PCA bus. Okay? So it's an equivalent for uh, for Intel, I guess, older hardware. Uh, 
this was ex explicitly uh, asked by Peter, the LPC. First, we made the PCI attachment, and he said this is not the best approach because not all our patients have the PCI uh, support, and uh, he implemented to use the LPC. Could you talk about the NE2000 work? Uh, not really. Uh, I know it right now. I, I can give you a high level view of the NE work, okay? Right now, the NE2000 it works, but it cannot be merged into master because Peter has some more work to do on the on the blue layer, layer between the emulation, the emulated driver, and the emulation layer, and does not want to put the code right now in it. So uh, it waits some work from him. This is what he said last time I talked to him, and he was a little bit busy in the last <laughs> months. Yes. Okay. Do you know that the uh, feature has any plans to merge your commit on it? My commit with what? Uh, so, I think I'm not, a lot of users are interested in your work uh, because to learn the older previous versions on the Beehive. So, many people have uh, the input attention of when your patch will be in the base code previously. My patch about ATA? Yes. And, um, so right now it's in review. It's it's not Peter's. It, so there is a dispute between Peter and Marvin there. If you enter the tree, you will see the comments in there. Mm. Right now the code is in place. It's working and needs only to be accepted. But uh, there are, there are uh, reviewers that need to accept this. Peter has another implementation. So, sorry, Peter. Does Peter have another? Implementation or not? No, no, no. This is the only implementation. The ATA, but the problem here is the ATA basically du duplicates the the code for for HCI. Okay, bus. So there are two different code bases in two different files, yeah. and they uh, they said maybe we can find a common code base and only export the interface to interfaces to for these two buses. Okay. But until then, uh, an intermediate step would be to accept ATA like it is, because it's, it's a clean code, and it's always another interface. Okay. So is your PhD all about uh, Beehive, or is it just... Uh, my, my PhD? Yeah. Okay, I started my PhD, it's a long story. I started, my, okay. I started my PhD having in mind virtualization on embedded systems, uh, at the first, I worked on an L4 microkernel, uh, which had the parameterization layer. Basically, I started two Android systems on the Galaxy Nexus phone. Uh, I was sponsored by a company. We had to make a demo to Samsung, and then uh, this whole thing uh, break apart at some point when Samsung wasn't interested in well, this world Android phone. Uh, and then I had to change my directions and. Uh, in parallel, using this uh, with this dual Android phone, I was working on the Beehive cache emulation with Neil not two, two years ago. After that, I came to HIBS. When I met Peter, and he came the idea to port it on ARM, and it somehow fitted with my PhD thesis uh, with the embedded virtualization. And basically, I started porting Beehive on ARM. So <laughs> that was my PhD subject, and I also presented. Uh, it uh, yesterday at Beehive Con. Uh, this Beehive is a project with the uh, generic for XX, generic um, drivers for x86. It is done with my students in my own free time. Let's say I couldn't include this work in my PhD because it, it, it not it is not not related to the uh, embedded systems. So my PhD this, this is about virtualization in embedded systems. Okay, thank you. Please. Uh, when you were testing the disk, you said that you used DD and then you compare the input and the output in order to make sure that you are not corrupting data or anything like that. I think. Yes. I mean, I did that something quite similar, and that's, uh, there's a tool that's called Badblocks that Bad basically blocks. does the same. It drives some random data into the disk and then uh, reads it back. It's a utility that's used to check if a disk is uh, broken. And I think it's quite useful in order to okay. test these kind of things. I mean, let me know. 
Yeah, you can use different block sizes, you can set which pattern you, you want to write. Block, like five this? blocks. With a, yeah. Okay. I think it's part of the e, EFS tools or something like that. EF2 tools or I don't EF2 know. EF2 Etherefast? Yeah, yes. something like that maybe. I don't remember the name of okay. the package. I will search for this packet. Thank you for the, for the input. Um, okay. Other question, please? Yes, Andrew. I've got a comment from IRC. There. LPC is ISA. Sorry. Okay, LPC is ISA. Yes, uh, this is this. Uh, is okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about this. Uh, I knew it, don't I? Okay. Thank you. Uh, other question, please? Uh, how does the number rise? The number of lines? Yeah. I guess uh, 1,500 lines. Oh, so I don't. Uh, okay. So it, it, it's a big patch because we, we do a lot of emulation in there for each AT command. Other questions, please? Okay, then. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any other questions, please. My email is available on the fourth slide. Okay, Mihai at tbsd.org. Yeah, tackle for Alex and Graham at tbsd.org. We will answer your, your question happily. Thank you very much.